and welcome to EC Electronics. This video we are going to see the relationship of DFT with EC transform or EC transform with DFT. Okay, so I have been looking for the uh, derivation of this relationship uh, from quite a long time, but I couldn't found it anywhere in YouTube. So I think of doing this video for you guys, the derivation of the relationship of EC transform with DFT. Okay, so let's see. So first let's write the equation for EC transform. That is x of z equal to, we know it is sigma n equal to minus infinity to infinity x of n z raised to minus n. So this is the relationship of x of z with x of n. So x of n is your input and if you want to find the z transform of x of n then it is given as x of z equal to sigma n equal to minus infinity to infinity x of n is a raised to minus n. Okay. Now, what we are going to do is, so we have to relate uh, relate the is a transform with a DFT. So, we have to bring the DFT terms here. Right. So, for that, we are going to substitute the value of x of n in terms of DFT or IDFT. So, we know x of n can be represented in IDFT terms. Okay. So, let's try it. So, we know this is the is a transform. Right. Now, according to the IDFT, you know x of n, that is your inverse discrete Fourier transform is 1 by n sigma k equal to 0 to n minus 1 x of k, which is a capital letter, x of k, e raised to j 2 pi k small letter n by capital N. So I hope uh, you are familiar with this equation. So if you are not familiar with this equation, please go watch the video on IDFT. Okay, so this is the equation for your IDFT. So this is x of k, which is your DFT. Okay, so this is how you can write your input in terms of the IDFT equation. Where uh, all these terms are familiar. So n is the length of your input. Now, x of k is a DFT. Now, k is the variable and a small letter n is also a variable and which varies from that is this k and n varies from 0 to capital N minus 1 where capital N is the length of your input. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute this x of n that is say this is my equation number 1. So, I'm going to substitute the equation number 1 in my equation number 2 that is I'm going to substitute this x of n in terms of this IDFT equation. So let's see. So what I have done is I have replaced my x of n that is my input in terms of IDFT. So this is my IDFT equation. So now let's consider this summation that is n sigma n equal to minus infinity to infinity. So this n is applicable to these terms. Okay. So here you know the n varies from n equal to 0 to n minus 1 or you can say that this n is only defined for this particular period. So if this sigma or this summation is from minus infinity to infinity, so you can truncate this summation from minus infinity to infinity to 0 to n minus 1. That is the signal or the IDFT terms are only defined on this particular period. So what we do is we are going to replace this n equal to minus infinity to infinity with sigma n equal to 0 to capital N minus 1 because your signal or the IDFT or the variable is only defined from 0 to n minus 1 because here we are considering that the signal is discrete and having finite length. Okay, so due to this we have replaced the minus infinity to infinity by n equal to 0 to capital N minus 1. So, write the remaining as it is. So, here this is the IDFT equation of your x of n. Okay. x of k e raised to j 2 pi k n by capital N into z raised to minus. Okay. Now, I'm going to take these terms outside 
and they take this terms inside. That is, I'm going to take this 1 by n sigma k equal to 0 to n minus 1 x of k out and take this inside. So, sigma n equal to 0 to capital N minus 1 e raised to j 2 pi k n by capital N into e sub raised to minus n. Okay, so what I have done is I have taken this terms out and I have taken this summation inside. Now, from these two terms, I am going to take this small letter n as common. So, in the next step, I will write this as it is sigma k equal to 0 to capital N minus 1 x of k. From these two terms, that is this exponential term and this is a term, I am going to take the small letter n outside. Sigma n equal to 0 to capital N minus 1 e raised to j 2 pi k by capital N into z raised to minus 1 the whole raised to n. Consider this term that is sigma n equal to 0 to n minus 1 e raised to this term into z raised to minus 1 the whole raised to n. This looks like sigma n equal to 0 to capital N minus 1 a raised to n. Okay and the expansion of this summation is 1 minus a raised to n by 1 minus a. Okay. So, this expression looks like this summation. So, it have a expansion of or the result of 1 minus a raised to n by 1 minus a. And here, our a value is a equal to e raised to j 2 pi k by capital N into z raised to minus 1. So, this is our a value and this a value if it is taken as a summation like this the result is 1 minus a raised to n by 1 minus a. Okay. So, this is actually a mathematics expression. So, if you don't know please uh, check how the expression is coming. So, anyway the result is this 1 minus a raised to n by 1 minus a. Okay. Now, what I am going to do is I am going to write these terms that is this expression that is summation as 1 minus a raised to n by 1 minus a. Okay, I am using a different color to write this. So, this terms will be written as it is. So, 1, my, 1 by n into sigma k equal to 0 to n minus 1 x of k into, I will give it a bracket, 1 minus so, here our a is e raised to j 2 pi k by n z raised to minus 1 the whole raised to n by 1 minus again a e raised to j 2 pi k by n into z raised to minus 1. So, this is our expression. Now, we can again simplify this term. Okay. So, for that, I am going to remove this. Okay. I am going to write the simplified form of this above. Okay. So, this term will be as it is. So, 1 by n sigma k equal to 0 to n minus 1 x of k okay into 1 minus now if you take this n term inside it will be e raised to j 2 pi k into capital n by capital n right so you can remove this n and this n okay i'll cancel it out this and then n will get cancelled into z raised to minus n. So, if you take this n inside, it will be z raised to minus n by remaining. That is 1 minus e raised to j 2 pi 
k by capital M into is a raised to minus 1. So, okay. Now, if you take this term, that is e raised to j 2 pi k, the n and n get cancelled, right? So, what is the uh, result or expansion of e raised to j 2 pi k? You know that e raised to j theta is equal to cos theta plus j sin theta. Okay. So, what is e raised to j 2 theta? It will be cos 2 theta plus j sin theta. Okay. So, the result is always 1. That is, I will write it here. e raised to j 2 pi k equal to 1 for all values of k. Okay, because this is an even term. The theta term is an even term. So, when it is coming with a uh, exponential, then it will be always 1. Because the sine term anyway get uh, cancelled because it will be 0. And the cos term, that is a real term, will be giving a value of 1. So, this term, that is e raised to j 2 pi k, the n and n get cancelled, right? So, this value is always 1 for all values of k. So, this thing you have to keep in mind. So, you can ignore this term. There is a z raised to minus 1 and rest will be as it is. Okay. So, I am going to omit this e raised to term and I am going to write the remaining. 1 by n sigma k equal to 0 to n minus 1 x of k. So, here this term is 1. So, 1 minus z raised to minus n by 1 minus e raised to j 2 pi k by capital N into z raised to minus 1. Now, if you rearrange it in order to form a standard looking format, it will be 1. Okay. So, this is the uh, expressions. Okay. So, the result is 1 minus z raised to minus n will come out by capital N. So, there is a 1 by n. So, by n into sigma k equal to 0 to capital N minus 1 x of k by 1 minus e is to j 2 pi k by capital N into is a raised to minus 1. So, this is the relationship of x of z with x of k. Okay, I will remove all these things in order to make the expression look clear. Okay. So, this is your x of z and this is your relation. Okay. So, uh, x of z equal to 1 minus z raised to minus n by capital N into sigma k equal to 0 to capital N minus 1 into x of k by 1 minus e raised to j 2 pi k by capital N. So, this term is with the exponential. I'll write it little bigger. Okay. Into is a raised to minus 1. Now, what all things are uh, here? So, this is your is a transform, right? This is your DFT. So, this is your is a transform. This is your DFT. Now, capital N is the length of your input sequence. Now, k, there is another variable, k, which varies from 0 to capital N minus 1. So, I think all the variables are clear here. So, this is the relationship of DFT with Isatron. Now, since we have this relationship, if we are given the DFT, we can uh, directly find the Isatron. So, or if we are given the Isatron, so we can directly find the DFT. So, this is the relationship of DFT with Isatron. Okay. I hope you enjoyed watching the video. Uh, if someone is looking for the uh, derivation of this relationship, please suggest this video to uh, those people. And also do share this video with your friends and family. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thank you.